Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy IV. In the last part, we went after some side quests here in the underworld, getting some Eidolons in the process, and looking at you and a shirt on Leviathan, and now it's time for us to finally head after the sealed cave. This is probably my least favorite area in the whole game, just because of a couple enemies that got to me the first time I came here. There are quite a few annoying enemies in here, though I actually have grown to love this place due to its main gimmick that we'll see momentarily. I think I didn't like it because of the gimmick, at least at first. Yeah, that happens. And the gimmick is right here. The door is transformed into a monster! Several doors in the sealed cave are actually trap doors. Trap doors have 5,000 HP, 30,000 XP, 4,500 gil. They only have two abilities, target, and Ninth Dimension, which is what they follow up target with. Ninth Dimension's an instant kill. However, the best strategy to do it is to reflect it back, thus killing the monster itself. Uh, they can also, if they get off their Ninth Dimension, summon off thing a few monsters, I think like Chimera Brains amongst that list and such. I like this place a little bit, at least now, because the first time I played it, I was really underleveled and uh, Rosa had not learned Reflect yet. So I kind of had, I had just had to deal with it, deal with the brunt force of Ninth Dimension, but I guess the thing having 5,000 HP makes it a little bit easy to, easier to take down. I think they have good defense, which is the way they get around that, but yeah, let's, no, actually no, three defense, wow, that's pretty low. Okay, here is a vampire bat, they have 1,014 HP, 2,306 XP, and 355 guild, they drop high potions and potions, and they're weak to fire. And their only attack, I believe, is the usual Blood Feast ability that bats have, which takes forever but doesn't really do much damage. Uh, notable, all future trapdoors will be edited out because it's the same fight. Sure, it's a required fight, but yeah, it's not really worth showing time and time again. Uh, now, one thing I should mention that I did in between parts, I, I, I apologize if I mentioned this at the end of the last part. Due to technical reasons, we actually have to re-record this part in particular. So I, I forget what I said exactly at the end of the last part. But in between parts, I stored the extra fairy rod, the mage masher, the poison axe, the Oichi bow, the sensing arrows, and the angel arrows. Ooh, angel arrows. I wish those existed in later games. Yeah. Mind you, I'm trying to think, what was the next RPG, uh, not RPG, next Final Fantasy game that had a lot of arrow types? Was it 12? 12 has a lot of arrow types. They've got, you've got the fire arrows, the ice arrows, parallel arrows, the bolt arrows. You've got, like, you've got arrows for every element, and then you have some arrows that do, like, extra damage. Hmm. Either way, next enemy is a Lesser Merilith, 1400 HP, uh, 3082 XP, 205 gil, uh, can drop oddly a lot of lightning elemental stuff, like Zeus's Rage, God's Rage, even the random Blue Fang every now and then. Uh, the Reek to Ice, so that's a good way to go about them. However, you can also, uh, there's another thing, I think you can, like, stone them or something? Pig? I forget. A lot of statuses, I think, either way. Seeing Merilith gives me a little bit of PTSD from uh, playing Nine the first time, and then fighting Merilith my first time, and dying because of the uh, uh, final attack. Oh, in the grotto? Yeah. That was the enemy. That was the enemy. Yeah. Th those are some weird looking Meroliths, too. Uh, oh, <laughs> this is the Vampirus. Uh, level 41. 2375 HP, 3582 XP, 188 gil, weak to fire, and they're also weak to holy, and they drop, uh, not, oh, they just drop vampires. I, I saw a thing called Succubus, no, and then I read it was in the P, uh, PlayStation, not PSP. I keep forgetting that PlayStation and PSP are actually different versions. Yeah, and I think I mentioned before, but to any of you who want to play the game, please don't play the PlayStation version. It's also the version I've had the crash on me the most. Like, I distinctly remember one time, uh, just after watching the long-ass uh, poetic stuff scroll by after you leave Baron with Kane for the first time on the way to Mist, uh, when I tried to save the game, softlocked on me. I could not do anything, but the world map music continued. <laughs> I hate that so much. Yeah, it was not fun. Oh, Firmasher. Firmer Shuriken. Er, Ermagerd. Uh, light curtain there, you want to hold on to that though. That is Reflect, and that will come in handy in the near future. Also, I believe a moment ago we got a Kotetsu Sword. That is a weapon for Edge uh, that I believe has 45 attack? 
I couldn't tell you. Oh, hey, same point. This is not the kind. This is not the kind of game where I research the attack levels. I do that for nine and twelve, and sometimes seven. Either way, an upgrade for Edge. Although I believe in here we have another trap door. Ooh, I wonder why you're being shown. Maybe it's because you actually decide to show up an enemy. Chimera Brains, I believe, is my guy. Yes, it is. 3,400 HP, 28,000 XP, 1,200 gil. Drops various fire elemental stuff, fire arrows, the three big use things. Its big thing is that it essentially has blaze or frost blast, depending on the version, so can rank out the damage pretty quickly, but not really noticeable. And there we get the Black Cowl. That is a headgear, if I recall, that uh, prevents sleep. I think it also boosts your stamina, strength, and speed by either two or three. So, in your opinion, what's the status effect that you need to watch out for the most in Final Fantasy IV? Because I, I can guarantee that sleep is not one of them. Honestly, status effects on you aren't a big issue in IV. Uh, the most I can think of outside of, like, the Lodestone Cavern, due to the magnetized thing going on there, might be... Ooh. This game actually, now that I think about it, doesn't really have a big one. It's not like 9 where there's like the virus test and what you need to watch out for, or heat especially. Or... Yeah, actually... I, I don't know, I don't know about you, but I love the virus status effect, especially for late game grinding. Yes! Uh, I'm not a big fan of it, especially the one Zorn and Thorn use it on you and the... Uh... Oh. Like, in, surprise, uh, surprise, you have this, uh, you have this, uh, status effect that you didn't know was put on you because there was no indication on screen about it. Yep. Mind you, I'm not a big fan of that dungeon in particular because fighting all those dragons, I think, is a bit dumb. Fighting all those dragons is actually really fun for me because there's always gonna, there's always someone alive to fight them, and that's the person that absorbs their wind attacks. Also, I should mention, uh, somewhere along the line of this dungeon, I, we got the Lustrous Sword, I believe. Uh, that's a Holy Elemental Sword for Cecil that increases Strength and Spirit by three. We're gonna get a better one later. Yeah. So there's no need for the Lustrous Sword. Correct. Plus, I think the blades I have right now are better anyway, in terms of, like, for my uses. It would have been funny uh. if this trapdoor was, like, a special trapdoor. Like it would like that. That was the boss. That would be cool. My th th what I would have liked to see is maybe when you fight it, it summons a boss monster. That, that would have been interesting. That would have been really cool. Either way, we got our dark crystal. Surprisingly easy to get. So let's get on out of here. Oh. That doesn't sound good. Oh, they're having the uh -oh. boss after the goal for once. And we don't have Palomar Portal this time, either. Next boss is the Demon Wall. I hate this enemy, and I'll, I'll talk about that later, because I didn't understand the strat for it. 19,000 HP, 23,000 experience points, 8,000 gil, they drop... Uh, this thing drops just potions. It's immune to literally every status effect except float, strangely enough. I don't even see why that would be useful on it, because it's not a very hardy boss uh best strategy how do you make a a wall float i i, I want to know either way strategy for this go all out with your attackers radio should be using leviathan here as it's the most powerful summon we have at the moment uh rosa should use slow on it during her turns just to make sure it doesn't get close enough to you to use its main attack because its main attack it'll only use when it gets right next to you but it's named crash and it's basically an instant kill uh, it doesn't cast it on everyone at once, though. This is one of those cases where it casts it one at a time, so if you're able to keep your inputs fast enough, you might be able to survive with one party member alive consistently. Just good luck living past anything at that point. I didn't know that slow stacked, so I only used it once, and even then I still couldn't beat it because I was really underleveled. It only stacks twice, so you're not really missing that much of an opportunity with it, but it could still be handy, especially in a time boss like this. Honestly, despite being the introduction of the Demon Wall, I don't even think this is remotely close to the worst one the series had. I think oh, that's no. still I think, seven. I think my least favorite one is either in Final Fantasy XII, the, fir the very first one you fight, or in, uh, let's see, Final Fantasy 
Final Fantasy VII is another pretty bad one. My strategy for the one in seven is always just make sure you have Meteor Rain and use it. Because Meteor Rain basically instant kills that fight, but ugh. Also, the rare boss fight where you don't hear the boss theme. Well, that wasn't too bad. Let's get on out of here. Only I can't use teleport. What about war not warp either? Okay, I guess they want us to walk out of here, and we do have to, so I'm just going to be cutting out to the top floor just to make things a bit easier on us once we leave this room. Makes me wonder why they're making us do this, though. Instead of just using warp? It's pretty yeah. annoying. Uh-oh. I know that glow. Uh-oh. Golbez! How you doing? Evil Boy does a mind control. Oh, God damn it, Kay. Not again. Shit. That means Golbez has all eight. What is even your goal in reaching the moon? Damn it. Uh, notable, if you did that glitch I was talking about earlier where you used teleport to get the Dwarven Castle Crystal again in the Super Nintendo version, the moment you entered the sealed cave, I believe these events would play out. So you would essentially get to skip that dungeon. Which I think is good because I did not. I don't like this dungeon. First impressions matter. I don't think I'll ever want to go through this dungeon again. Also, of course, since I knew Kane was going to leave, because I've played this game before, I do equipped all his shit. Well, that's a pretty bad development, Not so we should probably tell, tell King the bad Kane about news. this. Hey, dude, how you doing? Uh, so about that crystal you told us to go get and make sure it never fell into the enemy's hands. It fell into the enemy's hands. Lunar whale. Uh, not another one born of a dragon shit. Yeah, we know about Mycidia. I love that cliche uh, dragon stuff. It's hilarious. I do like the little detail here that apparently Mycidia is just a legend down here. and That, that kind of shows how long it's been since the two worlds were last connected. Because I believe uh, in-universe, uh, like, the citizens of Agart are supposed to be descendants of dwarves in some way, like, breeding with humans. Oh, that's hey, interesting. Oh, hey, Sid. I don't think they ever explicitly state that, but I find little history things about that in an RPG extraordinarily interesting. Yeah, but Sid, uh, you're doing to help us again, huh? Because we need to kind of get back up there, don't we? Edge, what are you doing? He's probably sitting and pondering his life. I imagine he's actually probably looking at his reflection in that metal. Huh. Posing. Macho Man pose. Dramatic pose. Power Rangers pose. Oh, now he's going to start to be with him. Hey, that's off Rosa. Thank you, Rydia. That's right, Sid. Tell him uh -oh. what's up. Uh-oh. In trouble, boy. Imagine if there was dialogue here. At the same time, though, I kind of wish there. I, I kind of like the way that it's dialogue list because they're getting a lot across with just the motions of the sprites. Show, don't tell. It is a very strong case here. I want to say the last time we saw Show, don't tell scenes like this was probably in five or six, because I don't recall Seven doing anything like this. No, actually, no, Seven did do this once during the scene where you go to the Shinra mansion basement after Disc 3 starts. I wouldn't know. It's been forever since I've played Seven. Oh, shit. Boy. He probably just tripped and fell. Now, I could be having issues recalling because it's been a while since we recorded Part uh, 11, but then they just do this. Yeah, they did, actually, because uh, we just remembered he's alive. God damn it, Sid. 
What's the point of faking us out twice with his death like that, huh? Well, we can now get back to the surface at least. And, uh, good, because while I like the Underworld, it's kind of claustrophobic down here. It is quite. The good thing is that we can finally get some good stuff in the Overworld. Yep, and now we can drill on up through the ceiling. I just realized they've never seen rain down here, huh? Welcome back to the surface. Very little has changed up here, but we do have some stuff we want to do. Now, we could head over to Baron. In fact, I think that's where you're supposed to go next. But I want to do some other minor things first. Namely, right there, I just uh, withdrew some stuff and stored some stuff, too. I stored the Defender and Sleep Blade, withdrew the Fairy Rod, Ruby Ring, and Rune Armlets. Now I want to fly over to Troya. Because for upcoming events, I want to buy some lightning arrows and a lot of them from the shop here. And, uh, let's see. That should do. Look, too many. Nah, perfectly enough. I actually think I do use most of those, too. I wish you could just buy one and then be done. Uh, this isn't DS, sadly. And now I need to get to Eblon, and it's the one area I can never remember how to get I've to. I've never heard anyone say this isn't DS, sadly. That... You know what? That's a fair point. But at the same time, I love only having to buy one of them. Hi, Tower of Babel. I need to come over here and get the Enterprise and the Hovercraft, because you might remember while we were in the Feymark, we got a specific medal from a chest there. Adamantite. If you recall, there was someone asking around about Adamantite when we were last here in the Overworld. What are you talking about? Right over what here near the village about? of Mithril. We didn't get We didn't get Adamantite from a chest. Yes, we did. No. In the, the fame arc. No, we got a tail. Oh. Well, I got that reversed. We got That's a tail we and here. we traded for some adamantite, and there was a dude who's like, I need adamantite. Ah, well, I got that in reverse. Oh, wait, no, I see what I did there. Yeah, now we have adamantite, so we can go get that to someone who needs it. Whoops. Oh, well. Yay for trading. Trade quests! Gotta love trade quests. Though I'm surprised Breath of the Wild didn't have one given the size of that world. Trade quests have annoyed me a little bit in recent times that I've been playing games. And I don't know why. Sometimes it's just the pure length of them and how much at times out of the way you have to go to do them. Because, uh, like, I think of the ones in the Zelda Oracle games, I don't mind those because I can do a lot of that along the way, but other Zelda games, it's just I have to go so out of my way for them. Looking at the one in Ocarina of Time for the Begoron Sword in particular. Either way, while we're here in the overworld, we should probably go inform Sheila of what's happened to Yong. Because we told her that he died back when, but now that we know he's, you know, alive, probably should get him. Or tell her about him, rather. Smack that no good noggin on the noggin for me. With what? Oh. Uh oh. -hoo. Hi. Frying pan. A frying pan forged with love. Oh. Forged with love. Does that mean she's a blacksmith? You know, that's a good point. I never thought about that, actually. Now, we're supposed to head to Mycidia, obviously, but since we're here, I do want to do the little side quest things that we basically just got handed to us really quickly. Because, as I said, you might remember there was someone looking for adamantite in the underworld. As well, since we have the frying pan, we might as well go and try to use it. So let's head back to the underworld. Thankfully, you don't need to use the other airship to, do, to fly around down here. The Enterprise can fly over lava just fine, as we saw when, you know, the whole cutscene with Sid was going on a few parts ago. Thank goodness. For that. First off, Cockle's Forge. Man was looking for Animantite, and now we got some, so let's hand it to him. Hey, dude. Have some metal. And he wants to take an old sword for us. This is the reason you could never remove the Myth Graven Blade from your inventory to this point. As well as it technically being a key item with an inscription on it, but, you know. I wish you could you doing? do more things with smithing. Eh, I can understand why they didn't, because it's a fairly... Er, not early RPG, but 
Super Nintendo RPGs you couldn't get too complex with, I, I, I think, at least from my understanding of it. But yeah, it, it, that's a thing. Uh, I, it makes me wish that this game just had a flat-out key item menu, but that I, I think the first Final Fantasy to have a key item menu was... Ooh, actually, what was it? Something on the Six had probably. one. Six had one. Six had one? Okay. And now I had to head all the way back to the self cave to get to where Young is because we can actually use that frying pan. Hey, buddy. How you doing? We have a message got from your you. wife. Ow. Wow, that actually worked. Let this be a lesson, kids. If you have someone in a coma, smack them with a plant frying pan. For kids, guys. Why won't my arms move? You've been mostly dead all day. Mostly yeah, dead. And it's not the same as all dead. But yeah, there Young's are types here. Of mostly dead uh, that are actually dead. This is actually a side quest I like because you get more than one reward for it. First off, what we're about to get is probably the more important thing to me, honestly. Oh, and yeah, he hasn't met Edge. Meet Edge. He's annoying. The Sylphs are going to fight in his stead, and because of this, we're going to get the Sylph Summon. The Sylph Summon's actually a fairly useful one. It does, I think, non-elemental damage in the 2D versions, uh, wind in the 3D versions, because they added it as an element. And it will heal all your party members for a certain amount. I want to say it's the amount of damage done, but I'm not entirely sure about that. Number of damage split by the number of party members? Makes sense. That might be it. I think that is it, actually. Huh, that was a guess. And so we should probably go take that frying pan back to Sheila, though. Hey, girl, woke him up. So uh, here's your dented pan back, probably. But for doing this, she also gives us the kitchen knife. I believe this is a spoon in other translations. Uh, it is the ultimate throwing weapon in the game. It basically is a guaranteed quad nines. I wish you could I never throw it, because then you could be the next Tonberry. Well, the first Tonberry, technically, because Tonberries weren't introduced until right, 5. The first Tonberries didn't appear until 5? Yeah, uh, in the Leviathan Cave, I believe. Or the area near that. Oh, man, I don't remember. Feels right. I know they were in 6, and they were called Pug. They're called Pug in 6, yeah. Either way, with that, all the side quest stuff I wanted to do is done, so let's head on over to Mysidia. How the heck do you have this map almost completely memorized? I have played this game way too many times. Oh, hey, you guys were waiting for us, apparently. Up the Tower of Prayer we go. That's the place that I talked to the Elder earlier after the Palom and Porum thing happened. Oh, here we go again. One board of a dragon, bearing darkness and light, shall rise to the heavens. This scrolls so slowly it might as well be an audiobook with little beeps indicating turn pages over the still land. Beep. The moon's light eternal brings a promise to the planets with bounty and grace. Bounty? Scroll. Mm, let lettuce. It come true. Let us pray. Delicious lettuce. So what are we praying for exactly? I guess that lunar whale thing they were talking about earlier. Light. Oh god damn it, we summoned Leviathan. He's back. <laughs> Actually, flying Leviathan to the moon would be pretty freaking cool. <laughs> that would be hilarious. I could see that in some kind of ROM hack. Meant for it, laughs and giggles. Actually, it, it kind of reminds me of the idea from the Delta episode in Omega Rufi Alpha Sapphire, riding Rayquaza up to do the meteorite thing. Oh, man. Whoa, that's, uh, that's, that's a thing. I don't know why. I, I always thought that it looked kind of derpy in that FM, in that cutscene. I don't know why. The Lunar Whale has, like, three different designs, depending on what you're looking at. The sprite work is different, the FMB work there is different, it looks different in 3D. It's an inconsistently designed ship. But we're to fly to the moon because someone awaits us there. How are we going to get there? Oh, gee, I wonder. 
The Lunar Whale. Hmm. Come on, Cecil, man. It's not that hot easy. It's not that hard. It's right. Yeah, it's the not Lunar that Whale easy. does allow us to get to the moon. Don't get you get your spacesuits. Because you can't yeah, breathe in that atmosphere. And we could go to the moon right now. However, I want to do some minor things really quick. First off, I want to buy a wizard's hat here in uh, Mysidia for something uh, that'll happen next part. And I also want to go back to the underworld. Because the thing is about the whole thing with Kokel. When you give him the adamantite, it's not immediate that he'll have the next thing ready. Uh, you need to wait for a certain amount of time. However, in this case, that specific cutscene is the amount of time you need to wait, basically. I'm not sure if it's uh, determined by plot events or just a certain amount of time. I thought it was uh, by certain plot events. I'll probably have the answer come up in a call out right about now. So doesn't, I uh, will have the true information there. But for doing all of that, getting the Animantite, we get the Excalibur, one of Cecil's best weapons in the game. Uh, in terms of uh, what it does... At least in the 2D versions. I think it's the second best in the 2D versions. It's one of the best all the same. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's only three weapons stronger than it in the Game Boy Advanced and uh, PSP version. 120 attack, 99 accuracy, 10 strength. That's really good. And we actually have an immediate use for it. Because you might remember there was someone that said that we had to go face someone else here in Baron before we could face them. Or rather, someone in Baron told us we couldn't face them until we fought someone else. Now that we've done the Sylph Cave sequences, uh, not the Sylph Cave, the Feymark sequences, we can do that. So let's head on down to the Ghost of the King. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Haunting going well? I hope death has treated you nicely. Give an eternal power in return. How many times have I heard that sentence? Oh, cool. Call my sword and it shall be yours. Oh, we need to earn it first. Great. What do you mean? Cecil's been serving you for, like, his entire life. Isn't that enough respect? Yeah, I suppose. Uh, is, either way, the next external boss is Odin. 20,001 HP, 18,000 XP. Only really has one major ability aside from physical attacks, and that's Zentetsuken, which in this game's case, I believe, is an instant kill on all party members. However, you can negate his use of it if when he raises his sword, like I think he'll do momentarily, using a lightning attack like Thundara, Thundaga, Rama, or Blitz on him. In fact, you want to use lightning attacks on him because I believe it does double damage. I didn't uh, know that was a thing. Yeah, uh, main strategy for this, Blitz with Edge, Thundara, Thundaga if you have it with Radia, Berserk Cecil, and slow Odin himself to get some extra damage in before he can try and use Antetskin on you. Kane should... Oh, I know, Kane's not with us. I forgot about that for a second. Yeah, not a very hard boss, but he can throw on the damage pretty quickly if you're not being, uh, cautious. And for doing this, we get the Odin summon as we have with prior... Uh, Idolans. In the case of Final Fantasy IV, I believe he will just have a, like a 50-50 chance of killing an enemy. Unless they're immune to it, right? Yeah. I'm not sure if it's like a, considered a separate kind of instant kill attack. Where is like, a, say, enemies will have a, a check if they're immune to it. Is there a way to manipulate that? Because I know at least in Final Fantasy IX... Depending on the number of, I think, ores you have, that increases the chances of Zintentican actually having the death effect. I do not think so. I think the first game where you could theoretically manipulate Odin was 8. And even then, Odin was a bit different in 8 to begin with because he activated automatically. Also, uh, while I'm on my way back to Mysidia, I showed the map there for a reason. You might remember that the Lunar Whale was supposedly born of a dragon. If you actually take a look at Mysidia as a continent, it actually looks like a dragon. Uh, we're on the head right now, and going towards where Mount Ordeals is, is the body. Either it way, with like that... The pincers of a lobster. I, I Actually, I can see that too. Uh, either way, with that, we're going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 13, we'll be heading off to the moon on the lunar whale. See you guys then.